Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Today we have no saints um, in particular to, um, no saints on the calendar to honor. So as always on these days, we will honor the saints of our own lives. Um, we'll be beginning on page 78 of the Book of Common Prayer and then quickly moving to the confession of sins, this being Friday. So let us begin. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. On page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Now turning to page 82, let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of this pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. We have two Psalms this morning, 140 and 142. 140 is um, found on page 796. We'll read them. Uh, responsibly by whole verse. Deliver me, Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from the violent. Who divides evil in their hearts and stir up strife all day long? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent who are determined to trip me up. The proud have hidden a snare for me and stretched out a net of cords. They have set traps for me along the path. I have said to the Lord, you are my God. Listen, O Lord, to my supplication. O Lord God, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the desires of the wicked, O Lord, nor let their evil plans prosper. Let not those who surround me lift up their heads, let the evil of their lips overwhelm them. Let hot burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the mire, never to rise up again. A slanderer shall not be established on the earth, and evil shall hunt down the lawless. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the poor and render justice to the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name, and the up upright shall continue in your sight. Psalm 142 on page 798. I cry to the Lord with my voice. To the Lord I make loud suppor supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him all my trouble. When my spirit languishes within me, you know my path. In the way there wherein I walk, they have hidden a trap from me. I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to, and no one cares for me. 
I cry out to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry for help, for I have been brought very low. Save them, save me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, the righteous will gather around me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the first book of Samuel. Now there was no smith to be found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make themselves swords or spears. But every one of the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen his plowshare, his mattock, mattox, or his axe, or his sickle. And the charge was a pim for the plowshares and for the mattox, and a third of a shekel for sharpening the axes and for setting the goads. So on the day of the battle, there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people with Saul and Jonathan. But Saul and Jonathan and his, his son, but Saul and Jonathan, his son, had them. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the pass of Michmash. One day, Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who bore his armor, come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison on yonder side but he did not tell his father. Saul was staying in the outskirts of Gibeah under the pomegranate tree, which is at Minyan. The people who were with him were about 600 men. And Ahijah, the son of Ahitab, Ichabod's brother, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord in Shiloh, wearing an ephod. And the people did not know that Jonathan had gone in the past by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a rocky crag on the one side and a rocky crag on the other side. The name of one was Boses and the name of the other, Sene. The one crag rose on the north in front of Michmash and on the other, the south, in front of Geba. And Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. And his armor bearer said to him, Do all that your mind inclines to. Behold, I am with you. As is your mind, so is mine. Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will cross over to the men, and we will show ourselves to them. If they say to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place, and we will not go up to them. But if they say, come, come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has given them into our hand, and this shall be a sign to us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, look, Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hid themselves. And the men of the garrison hailed Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Then Jonathan climbed up on his hands and feet and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer killed them after him. And, the first, and that first slaughter, which Jonathan and his armor bearer made, was of about 20 men within, as if it were, a furrow's length in an acre of land. And there was panic in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. The garrison and even the raiders trembled. The earth quaked, and it became a very great panic. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. Turning to page 86, let us say together Canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion and to our God 
where he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, weed for sowing and bread for eating, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth and will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that for which I pur have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of, at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he journeyed, he, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed about him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second cantable. Turning to page 93, let us say together Canticle 18, A Song to the Land. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you are redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never gave suck. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to page 96, let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Keep peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. You're saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. And now, as we gather ourselves to offer our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican communion, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Uzim Bubu within the Anglican Church of Southern Africa, for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the Congregation of St. James's Chapel in Prout's Neck, and for our nation as we celebrate Independence Day. And we pray for our own parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Terry, Angela, Tom, Barbara, and Olivia. We offer continued prayers for Zara, Bruce, Brian, Tracy, Sarah, Ross, Jenny, Rosemary, Marlene, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples in places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We pray for refugees, immigrants, and those who are displaced, especially for children, for all who suffer for conscience's sake, for our enemies and for those who wish us harm, for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to cooperate with God's earth in mitigating the climate crisis, that countries beset by any calamity, whether natural or man-made, may not be forced to compete with the attention of more fortunate nations, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict whether far or near, is to first love our neighbors as ourselves. We offer this prayer for Ukraine. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, 
now and forever. Amen. We pray for our own nation, for all who live with the daily threats and effects of gun violence, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error. For all who suffer from injustice, for eyes to see injustice, and for the will to work for fairness for all of God's people, and for all who struggle to change our world in its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan and Angus, our senators, and Shelley and Jared, our representatives, for Janet, our governor, and Rick, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish. We pray for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Ken, OBM, and OBO. And finally, we pray for the departed, for victims of the war in Ukraine and the fighting in Sudan, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Turning the page, let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service this morning. As always, we are happy and grateful that you've been with us today and hope that you'll join us again soon, perhaps Monday. Um, I do hope that you have a blessed um, weekend, and I also hope um, if you are in our area that um, you take care of yourself today. It's going to be hot and humid, so make sure you have um, you stay hydrated and um, and look to your neighbors as well. May we all know the presence of God in our lives this day and every day, and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a needy and hurting world. Again, thank you for being with us. May God bless us today and this weekend and always. See you soon. <laughs>